stand up.
like to dedicate this daily word reading to our wonderful spiritual leader, Dean Isley, who's not feeling well today. We miss you, Dean. God bless you. I am praying for you. Just hearing the words, I am praying for you, helps me relax into the calm spring of a trusted friend, friend's faith. Reassured, I feel my own faith growing stronger. My friend may be next to me or calling from far away. The power of prayer is undiminished by distance. Grateful for the gift of others' prayers for me, I welcome every opportunity to pray for anyone who asks. Having heard the prayer need, I let go of concern. In faith, I hold the Christ presence within the one for whom I pray. Knowing the truth of another's wholeness, I release any thought of illness. I affirm divine wisdom guiding important decisions and divine strength relieving any weakness. I feel the warmth of God's love bringing peace and restoring hope to those I hold in prayer. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 2 
So I'm not going to just sit around for the last 20 or 30 lives, <laughs> years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so even though I was in my 50s, I got my degree and I started marriage coaching, which I felt a really strong passion about. And through that, my confidence just took this big, big leap. And it's been very fulfilling. And then four years ago, I started doing music for the first time. And I had just been a frustrated musician for most of my life, for like decades, and just stayed away from the, the piano or any musical instrument because I was just frustrated and I didn't know how I could express that music. And, and really, it was through the church here and Amy's encouragement and Barry's encouragement and my friends here, Carol Landry and, and Debbie and, and others, that I finally started to, to sing and, and write songs. And, and now I'm feeling challenged at, at a new level to, to speak things that I feel are, are really important and that can, can help people in their lives in the way that has helped me, in the way my understanding of, about marriage and what makes a marriage work has enabled me to help so many people. And in the way through singing and writing songs, I believe it is, it's moved people and maybe given some encouragement for them to try to write a song as well. Uh, so I want, that's just my introduction. <laughs> so I wanted to, to start out with a, a quote from Unity, one of the beliefs and as many of you know, I'm, I'm a unificationist, and many times I bring in some of those ideas as well, because they actually build upon, expand upon the ideas of unity. So I'm going to read one of the first beliefs of unity. Human beings create their experiences by the activity of their thinking. Everything in the manifest realm has its beginning and thought. So everything is based on our thinking. And so we see the results of our thinking in this world. We see many, many good things, but we also see many bad things and so much division between people as a result of our thinking. You know, conflicts between countries, between religions, politics, COVID, to vaccine or, or not, just all these conflicts. And then within families, divorces, children not speaking to their parents, parents not speaking to their children, and even disunity within our own self, between our mind and our body. We know that there's things that we need to do, and yet, we struggle within. Like, I shouldn't eat that piece of cake, but it's right there. <laughs> or I know I really need exercise, but it's 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 just too cold. I mean, it's like 36 degrees outside. So <laughs> always coming up with excuses and 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 not fully uniting our mind and body. So all these things are a result of our thinking, and we all long for unity, but why is it so difficult to bring unity? Does anybody have any ideas? Just, just toss them up there. Fear. Fear? Okay. And fear keeps you, uh, keeps you back. And then you think you're racist, <coughs> but it's really fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Joe? Sometimes just sitting on that, in that favorite chair, lounger, mm -hmm. it's much nicer to read a book or watch a favorite movie than to get up and exercise. Right. <laughs> and, and any other thoughts? Unity between people. Why is that, why is that so difficult? We're not good listeners. Definitely. 
And that's one of the... Did everybody hear that? No. no. Okay. We're not good listeners. <laughs> 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 And this is, this is one of the most important skills that I teach the couples that I work with. And I, I personally attribute the success of my marriage of almost 40 years to this guy, who is an awesome listener. <laughs> he, he doesn't try to fix me. <laughs> he just listens really good. Then I feel validated. We all need this. So maybe maybe we should just, you know, we all want unity. But so maybe we just say, hey everybody, let's just unite already. What's the problem? Let's just unite already. But you know, just just do it. It's not that hard. Just do it. Just unite. And you know, we seem to be able to do it pretty well right here, but there's many places where it's totally the opposite. As a, as a marriage counselor, sometimes, in, in a similar way, sometimes I just want to tell my co couples, stop fighting. Just stop fighting. <laughs> because it's the fighting itself that is creating the problems. And sometimes when I hear that they had a, a uh, a big fight, I just want to come in. Slap me across the But that doesn't seem to work to just tell people to do something, to, to just unite, to stop fighting. We need more. And, and what we need is we need to know why. Why we need to unite. Why, so for, in, for instance, in the case of the couples that I work with, I explain to them why they need to stop fighting. And then when they finally get it, then they begin to make some changes. So for instance, I'll, I'll tell them, when you see that your tempers, tempers are rising, your blood pressure's rising, and, and you're just getting it in this bad place, you are going to end up saying things to hurt your spouse and it's like a dagger and the thing is even though you know maybe 10 mi minutes later you'll say well I, I didn't really mean that the dagger is still there and the scar is still there mm -hmm. so it's so important to calm yourselves down because when you fight nothing is accomplished you just hurt your marriage so that's an example I I explain why they need to stop fighting. And then I explain to them how. I give them an alternative. I teach them things like listening skills and having you know, time out, taking turns, even reflecting back to each other what their spouses just said to make sure that they really, really listened, that they weren't just thinking about their own rebuttal, but they were paying attention and listening. So I teach them these skills, how to do it. So understanding is so, so important. And no matter how desperate we are, no, no matter how desperate someone is to save their marriage, and they'll say, I've tried everything I've been so desperate, I've tried everything. And it's like, no, you haven't you tried you haven't tried everything. And, I, and I'm gonna teach you some new things, give you some new understanding and some new skills so you can finally start to build a, a better marriage. So understand is so important, and this is what begins to change our thinking. Because when we don't understand why and we don't understand how, it's very hard to have motivation to do anything. And many people just, in their marriages, then, then they just give up. <clears throat> but 
but I am just so, so grateful that there is so much new knowledge available in these days in which we're living. I mean, it's just so amazing, the developments, the, the technology. You know, I, I've told people 30 years ago uh, when Rob and I moved here, it cost 35 cents a minute for a long distance call. So that, that comes to $21 for an hour phone call. And, and we were struggling financially then, so it was just like, you know, I just didn't call, call anybody. Whereas like now, I just get on my phone, and I'm talking to somebody in England, you know, I had this sleep problem a couple years ago, and you know, my counselor was in England helping me. And then uh, I remember helping another guy who was in, in Thailand with his sleep issues, which I, I finally figured it out. You know, it's just amazing the, the knowledge that has become available in, in medicine and in my particular area in relationships and in psychology. Um, I've just started a, a training in a uh, psychological therapy to help people heal in a really, really deep way. And this was just developed within the last 30 years, and it has tremendous, tremendous role, um, results where people heal on, on the very deepest levels through this psychotherapy. And I'm just so excited about it. And, and there's so much available spiritually as well. All these different religions and new thought now. And I, I believe that there's a reason that all these things have become available within this last century and, and even just like the last 30 or 40 years. So there's such huge changes. I, I believe that, that God wants to bring healing to this world. You know, first of all, through through medicine to heal our bodies. And through psychology to heal our mind, our, our emotions, our hearts, relationship education, to heal our relationships. For so many years, people just struggled in their marriages. It was either just stay together in a miserable marriage or, or get divorced. There, there didn't seem to be any other options. But now all this wonderful relationship education has become available just within the last 30 years. And the thing is, when there's been these breakthroughs in knowledge, there's always, there's always been pioneers. And the pioneers have never had an easy time. You know, Rob is a scientist, knows about, <coughs> about this more. You know, the, the scientists like uh, Galileo and Copernicus, you know, the, there was a lot of persecution against them. And whenever there's been like a new religion, there's always persecution. And any, any kind of just new thoughts, new ideas, there's just this, there's just this huge resistance to it. And, and then also, that person, the pioneer, besides the persecution, that person many times has to, to struggle a lot. Now, not only against the persecution, but on different levels as well. For instance, um, one of the leaders in the marriage movement, he, he, was, he was a marriage therapist. He was actually trained as a marriage therapist. And he's working with all these marriages, and and they're getting divorced. And he was just so frustrated that he couldn't help these couples. And and th then at the same time, his own marriage was falling apart. And so he, he was just struggling so much, suffering so much. You know, why I I can't help the couples I work with. You know, and I can't even help myself. But over time. He developed this very, very successful re relationship education. So many times these pioneers have, 
had to really search and really struggle to find like a, a new level of truth. So, getting back to, why can't we unite already? Well, we have to ask the same questions. Why? Why is it so hard to unite? And, you know, we have, we have some ideas, but is, is there something more fundamental that we're missing? And, and maybe if we really understood why we're so separated, maybe that would make it easier for us to begin to change and unite. And also, we don't know how to do it. And, and I'm here to tell you that I believe that there is a new, a new teaching that will help us. As I said, we are in an age when God wants to bring all this healing our individual bodies, you know, in, in our minds, our hearts, in our relationships. But most fundamentally is our relationship with God. How did we become so separate? How did we become so cut off from God? We know there's that potential within us. We saw it in, in Jesus Christ. And he was able to live this kind of life of total love and yet somehow even though we try to practice it it's, it's just so hard it's so difficult what's missing and just like other pioneers Reverend Moon went through tons of persecution and being beat up and thrown out on the ground until he was almost dead being imprisoned seven times, suffering in a, a communist, the worst was the suffering in a communist concentration camp for two and a half years and actually becoming a, a model prisoner. So I'm just going to, in a really short summary, I'm just going to say one sentence, but this one sentence has so much implication. So the summary of what he is teaching, he said, that the most profound truth that he realized is that God is our Father and we are his children. I mean, like, really. I mean, we've heard this, yeah, we were children, God's our Father. But really, if we really, really, in a deep way, understood what that means, it could totally change our life. I want to talk about just two implications of that. You know, for, for most of history, God has, has been someone to fear. I think most of history, God has been someone to fear. And then more recently, maybe it's been more, God, what can I get? You know, you know the, the abundance. You know, what can you give to me? And, and how can you help me? And, and so a lot of our relationship with God has, has been this, you know, of just looking at what we can receive from God and, and or fearing God. If we don't do the right thing, what's going to happen to us? But then along came Jesus. And Jesus showed a love so profound that no one in history had ever seen before. This love was so profound and so deep that he even loved the people who were piercing him with, with spears and hanging him on the cross. His love had never been seen in this world. And yet that's the kind of love that we're meant to have in our relationship with God. You know, what Reverend Moon says, you know, if you really experience the love of God, you would just be in, intoxicated all the time. Then there, there'd be no need, need for, for drugs or alcohol or, you know, all these addictions because we would just feel the love 
within us all the time and just would naturally want to give to others. And, and you know, and I'll experience it at some times, and I'm sure many of you do too, when I'm with my clients. It's like, ah. Oh. And especially like the ones who don't, don't believe in God, it's just like, oh, I just wish you knew how much God loves you. But I know, and I'm thinking this, but I know how hard it is for you because of you, your childhood, because your father abused you, your mother ignored you, and you were so lonely and just left. But I wish, I hope I can somehow show God's love to you. Another thing is that Reverend Moon even went a step deeper because he understood who God really is. He discovered that God is actually the God of deep, deep sorrow. And he said that when he, he prayed and studied for, he started at the age of like 16 and maybe nine or 10 years, he just studied and prayed, and asked all these questions. He was just desperate to find out why there was so much suffering in the world. And when he, dis when he started to experience God's heart, he said he cried so much that the floor beneath him was just soaked, soaked with tears. And that was the kind of life he lived. And he taught us members also how to pray like that. And I have had many of, uh, of those prayers as well. And so, if we really began to experience the heart of God as, as a suffering God, this would totally change us as well. I mean, if, if you can imagine, like we were last, in 2020, we were taking care of our, our parents. My husband was taking care of his mom in California. And then my mother was going through things in Maryland. And I remember going to see my mother in the hospital. She had had a bad fall, and her eye was just all swollen. And I remember just crying and just feeling, feeling her pain because I'm her daughter. I'm, I love her. And then Rob too. You know, he had to make such a difficult situation. What to, how to help his mom? And then he finally put her in, in the nursing room and. and nursing home and and then you know I I know that he was just feeling so much pain in his heart for her because he knew that she was just like in this totally new place she didn't know anybody she didn't have her 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 iPad which was her lifeline as well as her TV um, because this place was not really organized and she didn't have anything and she must have just been so confused and you know he he was just, I could feel he was almost crying for his mom because it was so hard. And then he told me that he wanted to, to just bring her home. He was just going to bring her home. And, you know, and no matter what it takes. And it was costing hundreds hundreds of dollars, like six, $600 a day to keep her at home and have all this, this care. But, but then she ended up passing away right before we brought her home. So, you know, parent, children feel their parents' pain and they want to do something to comfort them. So could you imagine if all of us really felt God's pain, if we really felt that whenever we do something to hurt each other, we're actually hurting our Father in Heaven because all He wants all he wants is unity. You know, any of us as parents, I know for me, the worst thing for me was when my kids fought. You know, I don't care about the grades, whatever. I mean, I do, but, <laughs> but, but, but that would give me the biggest pain in my heart. It's just like, why can't my children love each other? And, and now they finally do. Now that they've grown up. <laughs> but, but that was so painful. So if we really understood and felt God's pain and cried and felt God's
God's pain as our own. There's no way that we could look at each other as enemies, as strangers. We could only look at each other as brothers and sisters. And then we would finally have.
was younger, all alone and blue. It seemed the world was so messed up with nothing I could do. So much confusion. Watching people fight and families torn apart. I saw people taking drugs to stop feeling. People making love with no meaning. Homeless people lying in the street.
please say the prosperity blessing with me. The inexhaustible resource of spirit is equal to every demand. There is no reality in lack. Abundance is here and now it manifests. It's just a wonder, but um, of course that doesn't mean I didn't have it and was asymptomatic, but it's been long enough. Y'all don't have to worry. He's been back at work almost a week, but um, my daughter does have it now. My granddaughter gave it to her, so also keep them in prayer. But uh, yeah, he, he really had a couple of bad days, but other than that, he did really well. So I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> Um, I have two. Um, one is that our friend Bracy, who was uh, in the, is in the hospital, had two operations last week. But she is getting so much better that they think she's going to get out of the hospital in a couple of days. Yay. And the other is that I've been working on one article for a whole year. Can you imagine mm -hmm. the whole year? It's ridiculous. But I believe that it's going to be finished today. That's Yay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, thank you. Well, I'd like to share my daughter and son-in-law have been under the weather for quite a while and haven't seen them. But I got to say that yesterday, everybody's all well and buoyant. And we have a nice celebration. <laughs> Debbie? Yes, I just got this beautiful portrait of myself from uh, Rebecca. She found a picture of me online that she thought was very, very Gorgeous. beautifully expressive. And oh, she picked yeah. out a really great one and oh, printed it out for me on canvas. So oh, I'm just right. I'm just ecstatic. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Good job. Okay. 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 Good Loving Yourself to Great Health, and then Sunday mornings, the Eric Butterworth book, Discover the Power Within You. So, 
it looks like Dean will be speaking next week. And we have scheduled an annual meeting for the 27th of March. March okay. 27th. Okay. So. Thanks, Cliff. So I, it's way down at the bottom. <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's hidden by the angel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I have one. I, I just have one announcement for anybody who loves jazz, like mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a jazz jam today from 5 to 7 at Valley Conservatory. And it's really easy to, to get there. It's just right on the street. When you get to the light, the first light, there's a Chevron. It's the very next building. It's got a sign that says Music Lessons. So that's from 5 to 8 this evening. And I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Please stand for our closing song. Wherever I am, God is in all.